You are watching TFI. Greetings, salutations, welcome to TFI. So as you know, over the last few years, I've been heavily involved with testing Inventor across hundreds and hundreds of PCs as far as going over to Las Vegas or Desk University and doing that class in collaboration with the Inventor Performance Team and the Inventor Product Team, writing the source material, writing the class in collaboration with them uh, for how to buy the best workstation for Autodesk Inventor, publish that source material online thinking that was it. That's all I needed to do. I could put that to bed. <laughs> no, 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 there's still some questions being asked that people don't find it, unfortunately. It just gets lost and buried. And this is one of the topics that gets raised. To be fair, I don't think I covered hyperthreading in that document anyway, so this is probably quite valid. But this is this is a valid topic to cover because hyperthreading is something that was debatable about eight or nine years ago, whether you should have it on or off. Now, not so much. And that's what I want to kind of talk about in this video and then show you some benchmark tests that I've done uh, to, to prove one way or the other. Uh, but let's start with what is hyperthreading, briefly anyway, if you're not all that sure what it is. Most people will have a CPU with hyperthreading or simultaneous multi-threading on their CPU. It's whenever you look at the spec of your CPU and it says you've got four cores slash eight threads or six cores slash 12 threads. Uh, it means that each of your cores is split up into two logical processes. And it's all to do with queuing. It's how a processor queues jobs uh, to the core. If you Google what is hyperthreading, as much as the guy drives me nuts, and I just, I'm not getting it, he just drives me nuts. Linus's Tech Quickie channel's got a really good analogy on what hyperthreading is. It's, he compares it to like eating and putting, you know, feeding your mouth with your hands. So your hands would be the threads and your mouth the processor. So it's like Inventor is one hand, Google Chrome is the other hand, and your mouth's the processor, you know, and you've got your hands waiting for your mouth to finish processing. If you only had one thread and one mouth, you know, you, your mouth's got to finish processing before this hand can feed it. But what if this mouth finishes eating and the hand's still going to grab food? You know, your mouth's sitting there doing nothing and waiting for your hand, but whereas you had two hands, this hand could be feeding and this hand could be getting. That kind of analogy. So it's a pretty, it is a pretty good analogy, to be fair. Uh, and that's what hyperthreading is. So back in 2010 to 2014 era, the advice that Autodesk were giving people, which is unfortunately still documented on their website, and it's still found very easily in the Google search, is that hyperthreading should be disabled on systems that are running Autodesk Inventor. And the reason for that is because Inventor can't utilize hyperthreading. It runs on one thread, for the most part anyway, most of its modules and most of its code runs on one thread it can't use both hands so Autodesk were like look back in 2010 most CPUs only had two cores four at most so you know we don't want inventors sitting around waiting you know being held back by Word and Excel and Outlook and Chrome and Lotus Notes or whatever we want inventor to have its its own core and not wait around for other things to finish so just turn off hyperthreading give inventor as much of the cores it can have and that was when you had two cores but it's 2020 now. You buy a you buy a workstation today, you'd you'd be off your absolute rocket. And I've got no, I, I don't know what to say to somebody who buys a four core system today. It shouldn't be happening. Today, your average system should be having six cores at least. Today, the average desktop now is eight, six, sixteen cores. You know this the 3950X from AMD is seven hundred dollars, and that has sixteen cores. You can get a thread ripper now with 64 cores. It ain't cheap, but it's still a desktop processor with 64 cores. That's where we're at right now, whereas eight or nine years ago, we were still stuck on two and four cores. That's how fast technology's progressed, but the documentation is still based on a time where we had two or four cores. Autodesk was saying turn hyperthreading off because it's detrimental to performance. Unfortunately, still today, when you buy the likes of a Dell or a Lenovo or an HP workstation, they come with like performance optimization profiles, and these profiles are created by people who, I'm speculating here, I don't know who these people are. I'm hazarding a guess they don't know that much about Inventor because they're creating profiles for every application under the sun. They're probably reading this documentation and they're going, oh, Autodesk say hyperthreading should be turned off. So all of these performance profiles turn off hyperthreading. It, it, should, that be, should that be done? Well, we're going to find out. How all this came about is because over on the 
Uh, how fast is your inventor? I know I'm waffling a bit, but that's uh, typical of a man of my intellect. I tend to talk a lot. If you don't like talking, I don't know what to tell you, mate. So uh, hopefully everything so far has been relevant. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, right. So it came from this thread here. How fast is your inventor PC? Really, this guy posted a benchmark score of 16.69, which is one of the best scores we've had to date. And it was on a 9900K, which is the CPU that's posting the fastest scores we've seen to date which is fair enough, but none of the scores have been 16.69 yet. We've seen 16.62s, we've seen 16.5 somethings. He's managed to get it at 16.69. To be fair, that is well within margin of error. Between 16.5 and 16.69 is well within margin of error. Just spamming the go button and doing it over and over and over again, you're bound to get a fluke hit. But what I did notice is that this guy turned off hyperthreading. You can see here he's got eight CPUs and eight logical processes. He's turned off hyperthreading, so I questioned him. And then he went on a tirade about, uh, I'm not going to read it all, but he just went off on a tirade about how it's it's beneficial in cash to core ratio. And his internal tests show that it improves performance and their clients benefit from their internal testing and all that kind of stuff. All right, you're a system builder. Okay, you're here to sell PCs. Wrong audience, mate. Wrong audience. So... The public benchmark shows that your PC is kind of in line with everyone else's system that has hyperthreading on, but your secret benchmark tests show that yours is better. Okay. Hold my beer. So let's uh, let's let's look at the let's look at some proper tests, which everyone can do. What I'm going to do is run six or seven tests, one suite with hyperthreading on. Each test is going to be run three times. I'm going to reboot, turn hyperthreading off, run the same tests again, hyperthreading off time how long those tests take. Pretty simple. It's no secret. I was even going to hold a camera against the screen in case someone says, I, I, I don't trust this guy. He could be fabricating this. Those charts mean nothing. No, no, no. I, I have an IT guy that says hyperthreading on. It does slow Inventor down. This guy's lying. He could have fabricated. You could do this yourself. There's no need for me to record an hour's worth of benchmark testing. You can do this yourself. It's in the BIOS. Just disable hyperthreading, run a test, test it yourself it's 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 within everyone's means to do this so there's absolutely fruitless <laughs> me fudging any tests here for nothing to gain from doing that let's take a look at the tests that i've run so starting at test number one which it was a mass file save migration so i've taken 965 parts which were invented 2016 format and migrated them up to 2020 so it's a big file save on 965 parts timed how long that takes with hyperthreading on two minutes and 13 seconds hyperthreading off it took one minute 54 seconds that was a bit of a shock when that result landed in first one uh, but I thought, right, okay, fair enough. Let's see how the rest go. Right, second test is finite element analysis, fine mesh compute and simulation solve, tire pressure study. So this is running a full meshing of an alloy wheel, which was quite a fine mesh, and then immediately into the simulation solve with all the loads on, all the forces and all the constraints. From start to finish, it took three minutes and 44 seconds with hyperthreading on, and then with hyperthreading off the exact same study, it took three minutes and 41 seconds. So over the course of nearly four minutes, there was a three second delta, uh, I think you can call that pretty much identical well within the margin of error uh, so hyperthreading on or off fea absolutely identical so this is my cpu ray tracing scene autodesk inventor studio 200 iterations of cpu ray tracing with hyperthreading on finished in three minutes and 20 seconds hyperthreading off finished in four minutes and 13 seconds so this follows pretty much all literature advice and guidance that you'll see when it comes to what hyperthreading actually is uh, and and when you've got a workflow which utilizes all the cores on a CPU, which is indeed what CPU ray tracing does, turning off hyperthreading will suffer. So if you're doing stuff on your PC outside of Inventor that utilizes all the cores, turning off hyperthreading is going to be detrimental to the performance of other things that you're going to be doing as evidenced right there. Uh, the next test is opening a large assembly to full mode, not express mode. Uh, this is nearly 14,000 occurrences, 1,500 unique parts, and both tests, hyperthreading on and off, finished it in exactly 30 seconds. No difference between the two of them, absolutely identical. Uh, next test, mass data translation step file format conversion. 
So this is using Inventor's native translators, converting 1,798 unique parts from a step file into native Inventor format, 15,500 occurrences with hyperthreading on, 1 minute 45 seconds, hyperthreading off, 1 minute 46 seconds. Absolutely no difference. Hyperthreading on, hyperthreading off. The performance of Inventor on that test, again, absolutely unaffected in any way. All right, then shrink wrapping the before mentioned large assembly. Uh, that's taken the entire assembly, 1,798 parts, and then wedging them into a single part. You would never do this in real life, but it's something that I know would absolutely cane the PC because it's a ridiculously complex task. Uh, with hyperthreading on, 9 minutes, 3 seconds. Hyperthreading off, 9 minutes and 30 seconds. So, yeah, there's a 27 second delta there, uh, but over the course of 10 minutes, uh, I'm not going to call that a lose for hyperthreading off. It's slightly beyond margin of error, but given that it's still i'm not going to call it a loss because given what the difference is between hyperthreading on or off if that was because of hyperthreading being off i would have expected to have seen a bigger difference there so no i've I'm not going to put that down to hyperthreading being off, to be honest. Like, large assembly drawn view computation, again, absolutely no difference between the two. And this is creating an incredibly detailed view of that large assembly. Nearly 2,000 unique parts with hidden line details enabled, background computation enabled, two views at 1 to 200 scale, one minute and five seconds for both to be created. And that wasn't enough. I then obviously ran the Inventor bench test, which is kind of falling in line with what we see over on the the, uh, the Inventor forums. This is becoming the kind of the definitive answer to whether or not the PC is good or bad. But it's not really. This is just this is a lightweight test, which just runs very basic part level, single part workflows. So with hyperthreading enabled, the PC scored a thirteen point three five. Uh, with hyperthreading enabled. With hyperthreading disabled, it scored a 13.52. Absolutely, categorically within margin of error. Even though that is higher, 35 to 52 is within margin of error. But the ironic thing is, mate, is I did a reboot immediately, like within the space of 10 minutes here. I did a reboot, turned hyperthreading on, and then I got a 13.61. It was higher again. So, like, literally, that test there, 13.35. 13.61 these two tests here are exactly the same pc with exactly the same environment run within the same space of like 20 minutes and we've got like 13.61 or 13.35 i mean that's the kind of the variation you get on this kind of test and the fact that hyper threading off it sits kind of in the middle of that i don't think at this point, after seeing all that, there's any doubt that turning off hyperthreading has absolutely no impact on the PC whatsoever. And having hyperthreading on has absolutely no impact on Inventor whatsoever. It doesn't cause any performance drop at all. It, it just doesn't. It's just, just keep it on. There's no benefit to turning it off. All you're doing if you're turning hyperthreading off is you're just you're hurting other applications that could benefit from it. That's all you're doing. The advice that you're reading from Autodesk was born out of a time, like I said at the start of the video, born out of a time where we only had two and four core CPUs. Now that we've got CPUs with a lot more cores, that advice just isn't relevant anymore. It's obsolete. So, and if you don't believe me, if you still think after seeing all of those tests, if you still think, ah, oh, you got the tests wrong. Oh, I didn't see, I didn't see how you cooled your PC. I didn't see how you timed the PC. I don't trust you. Do it yourself. Everything I've just done here is within your capabilities to test. So just do it yourself. You'll see. But there you go. That's it. That's the book closed on hyperthreading. In my opinion, that guy in the forum who sells PCs, he reckons that his internal secret testing has shown that disabling hyperthreading uh, his clients are benefiting from his his super secret tests and their inventors are running quicker for having hyperthreading off they're not they're objectively not running quicker in fact he's gimped their pcs they should be asking for a refund if anything else because they they gimped for other programs that they could have benefited from hyperthreading it's just if you don't believe me do it yourself just have a go yourself and you'll see I will argue this until I drop dead. <laughs> I will, because it's just, it's there. You can try it yourself, mate. Anyway, I'm going to knock that on the head there. That's all I've got. Thank you very much. Do hyperthread that like button. <laughs> and then subscribe if you're not already, and you know, all that stuff. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, mate. Toodles.